This video is still on the chapter of vectors in vector spaces and we have been introducing concepts um, uh, from the chapter of norm or length so um, uh, and in the previous videos we introduced the concept of dot product okay so this is uh, the time to introduce a very important concept the concept of this or I'm going to introduce this inequality um, called the cauchy schwarz inequality so if we have vectors u and v in the vector space Rn this is the inner product the norm or the length the norm of u times v this is an inner product, okay, is less or equal of the norm of u times, times from inner product, times v. This is very important because this is what you learn. You, you need this for metric spaces, for the beginning of mathematical analysis and all that sort of thing. Okay, so let us prove this cauchy schwarz inequality. Okay, so let us do the proof. Well, for the proof, we are going to prove this stronger statement. So this statement, if you prove a stronger statement than the one you want to prove, that one will be proved, okay? So this is a stronger statement because the, the vectors here, they go, they will have n components, okay? And we are going to prove that the inner product of u times v, the norm of the inner product of u times v, is less, is less or equal to the sum from 1 to n of inner product of ui times vi. And uh, actually, this one here should be equal. I'm sorry. Okay, because this one, at the end of the day, this is how u times v, because u will have n components, right? And v will have n components. So these two, they are equal. Okay, so the strongest statement is this one, that uh, the sum from u of the inner product of ui times vi is less or equal to the norm of u times the norm of v. Um, <clears throat> if one of these, oh, of course, that u, that u and v are vectors in R n. Okay, if one of, if either u is equal zero or v equals zero, okay, or if u or v is equal zero, um, then what you have is zero. 0 is less or equal than 0, less or equal than 0. Okay, so proved. Okay, so we only need to consider the cases where u is not 0 and v is not 0. Okay, so if u is not 0 and v is not 0, it means that the norm of u is not going to be zero and the norm of v is not going to be zero too. Okay? Okay, so what we have to prove is this. Um, so we only need to prove this. We need to prove that u times v, the module of u times v equals um, so the module of the sum is less or equal than the sum of the, the, the modules. Okay. Okay, so in order to do not get a heavy notation with UIs and all that, I'm going to normalize these vectors. Okay, so I'm going to divide um, UI by the norm of U. Okay. And I'm going to call this one x. 
and in order not to have this uh, I shouldn't have this one here right because well yes it's okay it's okay um, this is true too so in order to not to get a heavy notation here on VI uh, dividing I, I, I divide by the norm okay and I'm going to call this one Y okay so I will have this one will be X and this one will be Y and um, on the top of it I'm going to use so this is one first trick in notation so to speak and the second one will be okay X uh, where in a certain way X will be a vector and Y will be a vector too okay so the second one is um, just to remind you just check the previous video that u times u is greater than zero okay and that's why we proved this in, in, in a previous video right that u is always greater than zero okay and since x is a a vector 2 we are going to use x plus y do not forget these are vectors but I'm going to multiply x by lambda dot product with lambda x plus y and of course using this rule that was proved in a previous video this has to be greater than zero because this is a length or a norm where lambda can be any real number so we are going to use this inner product right this um, norm lambda x plus y squared because this one times this one the squared is greater than zero okay so lambda, lambda squared lambda times x squared plus 2 lambda xy plus y squared equals or is greater or equal than 0 so lambda squared x squared 2 lambda xy plus y squared greater or equal than 0 okay so I'm going to see all this as a function of lambda okay we have lambda square here 2 lambda plus 1 okay and this I'm going to treat this as if they were constants okay so I have an x squared here here I have xy right the function is a function of lambda so I have a f of lambda okay and 1 is multiplied by y squared okay so I have a function of lambda where this function will be greater than zero okay due to this inequality here okay okay let us solve this equation try to find uh, the zeros okay um, but this function can only be greater than zero okay greater or equal than zero so let us treat this or look at this function as a normal we're going to use the, um, the formula to solve second degree equations okay so that will be that's the famous when you x equals minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac right dividing to a okay let's just do that here so we have minus b that will be minus 2xy right plus minus square root uh, 
b squared, so 2xy squared, minus 4 times a, a is uh, x squared, and c, and c is y squared, all the, everything divided by a, so that will be divided by 2x squared. Okay. Okay, now I just rearranged here, right, because we have here, we have 2xy squared, so that's like 2 squared xy squared, okay, so that's 4xy squared minus 4x squared y squared. Now, do not forget that we are working on f of lambda, but we are coming from here, right? So f of lambda has to be greater or equal than zero, okay? And we already seen for equal, okay? So we this f of lambda has to be greater than zero. So this value here has to be um, negative, right? Otherwise, f of lambda, do not forget this, f of lambda has to be greater than zero. So this value here has to be um, smaller than zero. So for f of lambda to be greater or equal to zero, it means that this value here has to be smaller than zero. So, 4xy squared has to be smaller than 4x squared y squared. Of course, we are going to take this 4 out. And we will get xy squared smaller than x squared y squared. But do not forget that x and y, they are vectors. So, what is x, y, xy? So, at the end of the day, xy this will be the norm squared, this will be the norm, right? And x squared, so x, the norm of x equals x times x, right? So what we have here is the norm of x in a product with the norm of y. And since at the beginning we used x as the vector u and y as the vector v, we can say that u times v is smaller than the vector u times dot product, of course, the vector v. And this concludes the proof.